So tonight, a twist. We're going to ask how you can reduce your debt but still enjoy your life. Zainab Williams is a certified financial planner. And Barry Choi writes and speaks about personal finance. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. Zainab, based on, on what you're seeing in your practice, how have people amassed so much debt so quickly? Well, it's because uh, what had happened during the pandemic was that a lot of Canadians were sitting on uh, savings. But once things started to ease up, many people started to travel more. They, had, they started spending a lot of money. And we became very comfortable with, uh, with, paying, with paying our lifestyle with credit cards and also lines of credit. But unfortunately for us, with the interest rates increasing, our ways of actually spending our money has also started to make us question how we're spending. And unfortunately for a lot of people, the increase in debt is causing a lot of financial strain. And uh, it's becoming much more expensive for us to pay down our debt. Yeah, and Barry, I'm sure some people listen to that. They can sort of feel the emotions rising uh, for them because there is that part of, of being in debt. It can be stressful. So what advice do you, do you have for people who, I mean, at times feel like they're drowning in debt? You know, there's no denying that that is a huge issue for many people. But, you know, you got to work with the simple tips that you've got available to you. So maybe that means getting a line of credit from your financial institution because sometimes that means a lower interest rate compared to high interest debt, such as your credit cards, which has an interest rate of 20% plus. Uh, you know, alternatively, some credit cards have a balance transfer option that allows you to transfer one balance from a credit card to a lower one. Uh, and the reason you would want to consider that is basically the lower interest rate is what you want. A lot of people are struggling. You know, these are things that you may have not considered in the past, but you want to keep your bottom line as low as possible. And, and Zainab, th this can take a toll on relationships as well and, and financial stress. I mean, we hear this all the time, can be a factor in, in marriage breakdown. So how do you approach it? How do you uh, help families make sure they're kind of working together to get back on solid ground? Well, it, ha it has definitely impacted uh, families across the board. For some, uh, for some others, this is a time to be vulnerable with your spouse and uh, to share your financial worries. And in other cases, um, spouses are starting to ask themselves questions that they never had to ask themselves before. You're starting to look closely at your spending habits, and that can, cr that can create a wedge between you. So what I've seen with uh, spouses, especially who have a different type of relationship with debt, what they're doing is um, it's, it's, it's really is important for you to have a transparent communication. That means if you're comfortable with debt, speaking with, to your spouse and letting them know that uh, this is the reason why I'm comfortable and this is why the numbers justify me feeling this way. And on the other hand, if your spouse is, uh, is not comfortable or is actually is not comfortable, then there is a way of both of you coming together to, to go through the numbers to see if it makes sense for you to feel the way you are feeling. So it's important to have that transparent communication to talk through this, this time period and realize that you are on the same team. And Zainab, let me ask you a, a very specific question that, that I think people are, are kind of stuck in the middle of in some cases, and that, that is renewing mortgages with a, a much higher interest rate. What, what should people keep in mind? What people need to keep in mind is, uh, is the fact that we need to start looking at our cash flow closely. And that means that looking at your actual um, expenses and ensuring that the actual, the actual payment increase is not going to destabilize your finances drastically. And if it is, if that extra $500 is going to put you in a financial rut, it is important to contact your financial institution to see if maybe extending your amortization period might be a good way for you to, uh, to come through this uh, financial instability. Because once you start making those adjustments, it can help you right now and weather through this storm and also speak to your mortgage broker about different types of perks that may exist within your actual mortgage. Okay, Barry, here's a challenge for you. Joy is not a word people normally associate with a conversation about debt. Is, is there a way for people to, to kind of manage their debt and still enjoy their life? You know, it really depends on the type of debt. You know, if you're telling me I've got credit card interest, you know, or credit card debt, 
$10,000, whatever, and you're paying 20% interest, I will never recommend you take a vacation uh, just because you need it or you deserve it or for whatever reason. Now that said, if you've got a debt in a reasonable amount, let's say it's student low, low, low interest, you've got that line of credit I've suggested, the amount is reasonable. Sure, you maybe you can spoil yourself, maybe you can budget it, but the reality is, is as long as you're paying out off your debt, especially if it's high interest debt, you're not going to get a better return. So it's hard to pay off that debt if you're thinking about other things, whether that be a vacation, new car, new electronics, anything like that. 30 seconds for each of you on this last question, and Barry, I'll start with you. Uh, a, a practical tip for people who are thinking about trying to get a hold of their debt, trying to get out of debt, and, and staying out of debt. You know, it's simply about having the conversation with professionals, your family, and your friends. You know, there's a lot of people that out there that can help you. So don't think that you're in this bottomless hole that you're not going to be able to get out. You know, there's bankruptcy trustees, you, there's your financial institutions. You know, just speak to people that can get, give you professional opinions to help you through this difficult time. Yeah, those credit counseling services, from what I hear, are terrific. Zainab, last piece of advice? I will definitely say that uh, we need to start looking at our spending triggers. So that means looking at your actual, um, looking at whether your, your, your current relationships are impacting how you spend money. Looking at the fact that maybe your email itself causes you to spend money. So that means searching through your subscription services and unsubscribing. This way we're not tempted to spend. And lastly, I would say that delete your credit card information from all, all websites. This way you can start becoming more intentional when you spend your money. An unpleasant topic, but a really pleasant conversation. Thanks to both of you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you.